With the recent wave of smaller, more localized terrorist attacks like the ones that have recently occurred in London and in France, the need to develop situational awareness has never been more important. Would you know what to do should a hostile situation start unfolding quickly around you? How would you react? Would you freeze or would you run? How do you train yourself to develop a faster response time when seconds matter? You can show your support for this channel by clicking the like button, sharing on social media, providing feedback in the comments section, and don't forget as a subscriber to click the bell icon below to get updates. Enjoy the video. Fortunately for average individuals like you and I, developing situational awareness and the ability to act quickly is a skill that can be developed. In this video, we'll discuss the skills you can begin to develop now and how you can easily incorporate those into your daily routines to help increase the likelihood that you will survive if a hostile situation unfolds near you. In 2003, I spent three months in Kabul, Afghanistan doing NGO work. From time to time, a few members from our team would visit the downtown bazaar to pick up things we needed. There was this one occasion where we ended up getting a crowd that began to follow us while we were at the bazaar. By the time we decided to act, the crowd following us had grown quite large and we ended up having to sprint to a taxi, narrowly making it out before the crowd began to fully engulf us. It was in this moment that I had my first introduction into how valuable being aware of your environment at all times really is for survival. Before we go into detail in this video, I want to first discuss a concept called the OODA loop, which will serve as a foundation for this video. The concept of the OODA loop was described by United States Air Force war theorist Colonel John Boyd. The term is said to have been used by the United States Air Force fighter crew as the ace factor when it comes to situational awareness. Survival in a dogfight was typically a matter of observing the opponent's current move and anticipating his next move a fraction of a second before he can even observe and anticipate his own. The phrase OODA loop refers to the decision cycle of observe, orient, decide, and act. In this video, we'll discuss this concept of the OODA loop and beginning to train your mind to learn how to not only spot a potential threat, but learn how to quickly react. While I'll cover some practical steps to teach you how to begin to look for a potential threat, I'm also going to discuss how to begin conditioning your mind to move past identifying a threat and acting when literally seconds matter. So the first step is to observe. In this video, we'll spend a good chunk of our time focusing on this first point, observe, as so much of situational awareness has to do with simply being cognitive of your environment and observing what's happening around you. This is a skill that is quickly being lost by many in this day and age. We're constantly surrounded by distractions, especially with the era of mobile technology. Learning to look up and take notice of your surroundings is this first step, observe. It's important that you learn to train your mind to be in an active state of observing what is happening around you at all times. Now, this is not paranoia, but rather being alert, cognitive of the moment and what is happening around you. You'll sometimes hear people say, hey, live in the moment. And this simply means to take in everything around you. Now, here's a popular photo that circulated the internet a few years ago of a woman observing an event while everyone else was on their phone trying to get a picture. She was in the moment, taking it all in. Stay in the moment, look up and observe what's happening around you. Not only is this important to look up and observe what is happening, equally as important is to begin training your mind to memorize what's going on around you when you come into a new environment. In Boy Scouts, we played a game that was called the Kim's Game, which taught you to memorize things and later recall what you saw. Begin to take note of what is around you and see what you can quickly memorize. By doing this, you begin to learn to improve your ability to learn to take notice of what is happening around you. There's a scene from the movie The Born Identity where the main character is trying to piece together his past and he's in this diner reciting all the information he's memorized from his current surroundings. It's a skill that is learned and it takes time but start by taking note of your surroundings and begin memorizing details to see how much you can retain. The goal is to be in a state of alert, paying close attention to the details around you. Some may argue that this is being a bit paranoid and we're not necessarily looking for a threat around every corner. We're not worried that something bad is about to happen, but rather we're learning how to take notice and observe what is happening around you at all times. You're in an active mental state instead of being passive. Here's some additional tips. Position yourself to observe. I recall reading an article from a soldier returning from Iraq and after constantly being under pressure from being in a hostile environment, he found himself always looking for places when going to restaurants where he could see the entrance and position himself close to an exit. 
When in a building or a room, position yourself to see entrances and if possible, stay close to an exit because should a problem materialize, you will be in a position to observe and escape if need be. If you've got those places already identified in your head, should a problem come up, you can quickly move to the last two phases of the OODA loop of decide and act quickly, which we'll cover in just a moment. Also, learn to observe behavior that is out of the ordinary. I'll give you an example. Imagine one night you go to an ATM to withdraw some cash. There's no one around. It's late. Out of the corner of your eye, you suddenly notice an individual walking down the street in your general direction. A few seconds later, you notice they cross the street to your side. While you're still handling your transaction at the ATM, they've now changed their direction to walk specifically to your direction. What do you do? This is where you have to work through the steps of the OODA loop, which we'll discuss a little more. Also, be a good watcher. Begin to not only watch people, but see if you can pick up on people's mannerisms and behaviors. Learn to keep an eye out for any odd behavior. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that someone is a threat just because they're behaving a little out of the ordinary, but take note nonetheless. When things are not lining up and you sense a potential threat, it's time to move through the next steps of the OODA loop, which leads us to point number two, orient. Being observant is the first part of developing situational awareness. But once you've determined that something or somebody is not following the baseline of expected behavior for the given environment, we have to quickly compile and synthesize that information and piece things together to decide what we will do next. We all do this at some level, whether we realize it or not. When you're at a restaurant and someone begins to act out of the norm, you often find yourself doing what? You begin to instinctively turn in their direction. They've got your attention. It's at this moment that we need to quickly move through the OODA loop cycle to decide what we're going to do with that information that we now have. We spotted an anomaly, we're pivoting, we're orienting ourselves to that issue to determine if we're facing a threat or not. While many people can observe things that are a bit off, the ability to orient and move through the next few steps are critical and require that you force yourself to engage in the moment. This is the most important part of the OODA loop since many simply cannot move past the observe phase. Moving through the ability to orient yourself to actively engage in the moment determines whether we'll lock up if things escalate, which leads us to the next point, decide. Okay, so we're in an environment, we're cognitive of what is happening around us. So what would you do if you actually saw something out of the ordinary and you begin to orient yourself to face that threat? This is where we must come up with a plan to decide how we will behave. Putting together a plan on the fly with the information you have at your disposal and having your mind already actively engaged allows us to overcome what our body will do naturally. This is where many people that haven't made this decision to engage their mind to orient themselves to the threat instinctively default to their freeze or flight behavior. The term deer in headlights refers to how if you shine a flashlight in a deer's eyes, they'll freeze up. Now, I grew up in the country and we had this happen many times driving down country roads at night. If a deer is on the road in front of you, your headlights will hit their eyes and they just freeze in place. Without going into a deep discussion of the body's flight or fight response, it's at this moment that most people lose their higher cognitive thought process and let the hormones that are being dumped into their bloodstream by their body take over. So how do we overcome this natural reaction? There's a few simple things that can help calm your body enough to give you time to react. These techniques are useful if time is afforded you, but sometimes you don't have that luxury. These next two techniques will help you stay in control mentally. Step number one, control your breathing. Your body will naturally increase your breathing rate as a threat has presented itself and your body is beginning to prepare you to run. Step number two. Now, this is another very important technique to get the higher cognitive process going is to begin to ask yourself questions. This delays the physiological response and the neurotransmitters to slow them down. The best technique is to develop positive inquisitive self-talk in your head. Ask yourself, what are you gonna do here? Prepare yourself and talk yourself through what you're gonna do to handle the situation. Now don't get locked onto the threat and allow yourself to freeze up, but rather purposefully engage your mind and talk it through to find a solution that you can act upon, which leads us to our next point, act. This is the final part of the OODA loop. We've been observing, we've oriented ourselves, we've made a decision to engage with a plan, now we must decide to act. Out of all the four phases discussed above in a hostile situation, this phase may be the hardest for some people. Again, life or death can be hanging in the balance in a matter of seconds if individuals are not capable or unwilling to quickly move and act. In the previous step, I brought up how critical it will be to actively engage your mind to form a plan deciding to move forward 
and to keep your ability to listen to your higher thought process versus succumbing to the rush of adrenaline that is now being dumped into your bloodstream. It's in this moment that you must move and you must act. While working on this video, I had a talk with a friend of mine, James Story, over at Range 6, who specializes in firearms and tactical training. He uses the OODA loop for his students, and one of the things he impresses upon his students when training them at the range and firearms is to not just shoot at a paper target, but to imagine a scenario in their mind where they may be shooting at an intruder who is threatening their family. The goal is to teach his students to develop a killer instinct, to begin training their mind and their emotions to engage if they have to face a hostile threat. Train the way you think you'll feel in real life if you're really in that scenario instead of just coming to the range to shoot paper targets. Be aggressive, visualize a scenario, and train accordingly. Situational awareness is a skill that you must work on to develop. As you leave your home and visit stores or restaurants, see if you can begin to train your mind to look for an exit. Observe what is happening around you and what is standing out. Make a decision to pull your attention away from your cell phone and instead focus on the now. Focus on the people that are around you. See how much you can memorize from your surroundings. Continue to sharpen your mind. I'd love to get your feedback in the comments section below. If you like this video, please feel free to like it or share it on social media. As always, be safe out there.